Eddie's been in a car accident. You'll have to go on for him. Good heavens, how awful. Who's Eddie? Eddie. Edwin, you'll have to go on for him. On for him? Well, he can't go on. He's been in a car accident. Yes, I understood that part, but, but what do you mean, go on for him? You play the part. Now, I know you haven't had a chance to rehearse it exactly, but presumably you know your lines, and you've certainly seen it enough. I don't understand. Do I know you? George, we really don't have time for this kind of joshing. Half hour! My name isn't George. It's... Well, I don't know what it is, but it isn't George. Oh my God, did you hear about Eddie? Yes, I did. Oh, it's just too, too awful. Well, good luck tonight, George Stalley. We're all counting on you. Of course, you are a little too young for the part. You are much taller than Edward. So we'll cut all the lines about your gazing up into my eyes. Oh, and don't forget, when I cough three times, that is your cue to unzip the back of my dress. Then I slap you. We changed it from last night. Uh, excuse me. Oh, what play are we doing? What? Well, what's the play, please? Coward. Pardon? It's the coward. No coward. <laughs> George, don't do that. For a second, I thought you were serious. Break it like dumb. I hope it's private lives. At least I've seen that one. And am I an accountant or an actor? I don't know. And why does everyone keep calling me George? Oh, hello, Stanley. Uh, what play are we doing? Checkmate. Checkmate? By Samuel Beckett? In the garbage cans? Really, Stanley, you're always playing these sort of jokes. Just don't do it on stage. Well, good luck tonight. I mean, break a leg. Did you hear? Edwin broke both legs. I've never heard of Checkmate. George, don't get changed. We have 15 minutes. Good God, I'm late. So low there, Eddie. Oh, you're not Eddie. Who are you? You mean you don't know who I am? Who the devil are you? George, I think. Or maybe Stanley, but, but probably George. Look, no one's allowed backstage before performing, so I'll have to ask you to leave, or I'll be forced to report to the stage manager. Oh, she knows I'm here already. Oh, well, if Meg knows, then I guess it's all right. Besides, it's not my problem. I'm late enough as it is already. Ten minutes, everybody! The call is ten minutes! I better just go home. Oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. George, stop that! Really, you keep this up when you have to bring up on charge. Um, can you tell me where the dressing rooms are, please? George, you're not amusing. It's that way. Give me those. I'll go to the uh, please don't soak my jacket. Don't tell me my job. Now go get changed. The call is five minutes. I don't have to. Five minutes, everybody! The call is five minutes! Please! Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? At this evening's performance, the role of Elliot, normally played by Edwin Booth, will be played by George Spelvin. The role of Amanda, normally played by Sarah Bernhardt, will be played by Sarah Siddons. The role of Kitty, the barmaid, will be played by Mrs. Patrick Campbell, and Dr. Crippen will play himself. Thank you. Well, she's sort of 
Nondescript, I'd say. I bet you were going to say that she's just like Lady Bundle, and that she has several chins, and one blue eye, and one brown eye, and a third eye in the center of her forehead. Weren't you? Yes, I think so. Pictures like that, too. I bet you were just going to tell me that you traveled around the world. Oh, oh, yes. I, I have traveled all around the world. And how was it? The world? Yes. Oh, very nice. I always feared the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box, did it? Not really. I always feared the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box, did it? Well, I guess it did. I always feared the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box, did it? Hard to say. What brand biscuit box? I always feared the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box, did it? Did it, did it, did it, did it? Who shot do you think that is out there? Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it? Not only did the Taj Mahal look like a biscuit box, but women should be struck regularly like gums. Extraordinary how potent cheap music is. Yes, quite extraordinary. So how was China? China? You traveled around the world. How was China? I liked it, but I felt homesick. How was China? Uh, there's lots of rice there. Uh, the women, they buy your feet. How was China? I hated it! I missed you. How was China? I hated it! I missed Sybil. How was China? I... I missed the maid! Oh, maid! How was China? Hold on a moment, please! Maid! I think you missed a spot right here. How was China? Very large, China. And Japan? Very small, Japan. And Ireland? Very green. And Iceland? Very white. And Italy? Very Neapolitan. And Copenhagen? Very cosmopolitan. And Florida? Very condominium. And Perth and Boy? Very... A very mobile home? I don't know! And Sybil? Oh, Sybil! Your new wife, we married after you and I got a divorce! Oh, we were married. I forgot that part. <laughs> oh, Lita, you're so amusing. You make me laugh all the time. <laughs> so do you love Sybil? Well, I guess so. I married her. <laughs> oh, Lita, I'm sorry. We were mad to have left each other. Kiss me. Oh, how ghastly! What shall we do? We must all speak in battle of voices and attempt to be civilized. Well, if this must be Amanda. I think she's simply obnoxious. Oh, very rude. Oh, Elliot, how can you treat me like this? Hello, Sybil. Well, since you asked, I'm very upset. I was inside writing a letter to your mother, and I wanted to know how to spell a word there. A-P-O-T-H-E-C-A-R-Y. Thank you. To my eyes to see if you were kissing my husband a moment ago, we must all speak in very low voices and attempt to be civilized. I was speaking in a very low voice. Yes, but I can still hear you. Oh, sorry. I can hear a bloody word she's saying. The woman's a nincapoo. Say something, Elliot. Well, I couldn't hear her either. Elliot, you must choose between the two of us immediately. Do you love this creature, or do you love me? I wonder where the maid is. Forget about the maid, Elliot. You can never have a lasting relationship with me. Choose between the two of us. I choose, uh, I choose, oh my god, I don't know my lines. I don't know what I'm doing here. I wish I weren't here. You guys, you see, I was going to join the monastery oh, right Elliot. after high school, but I didn't do it. You're I really don't know why. You're and you're ranting. Come, come. Who do you choose? Me, or that bag from there? 
speak no more. Thou turnest my eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and graining spots as will not leave their tooth. Oh, oh, Amanda, someone who was here, I thought he was Victor, but then it turned out not to be him. Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. These words like daggers enter in my ears. No more, sweet Hamlet. Oh, very well. What do you want to talk about then? No more. Please don't go. Well, I I'm sure if we just wait a minute, someone else will come out. Of course, sometimes people do have soliloquies in Shakespeare. I'm sure if we just wait a moment more, someone else will come. Oh dear. <laughs> Uh, oh, maid! To be or not to be? <laughs> that is the question. Flying? Flying? Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave I am! Whether it is nobler in the mind's eye to kill oneself or not kill oneself, <laughs> to sleep a great deal, for we are such stuff that our dreams are made on and, and our lives are rounded <laughs> by little sleep. Uh, <coughs> uh, Thrift, thrift, Horatio. I'm neither a borrower nor a lender bee. But to thine own self be true? <laughs> There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. Extraordinary how potent cheap music can be. <laughs> I'd come to wife in Wuthley and Pachua, if Wuthley, then Hubbley and Pachua. Oh. Out, out, you damn spot. <laughs> Brush up on your Shakespeare. Start quoting him now. Da, da, da. Who's your feeling that is out there? How is China? Very large China. How is Japan? Very small Japan, my... I... I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, line. Line? Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God, I'm hardly sorry for having offended me, and I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and fear the pains of hell. But most of all, because I've offended thee, my God, who art all good and all deserving of all my love, and I call I myself to confess my sins, to do penitence, and to amend my life. Amen. That's the act of contrition that Catholic school children say when they want to be forgiven of their sins. Catholic adults say it too, I imagine. I don't know any Catholic adults. Line? You see, when you call for a line, the stage manager normally gives you your next line to refresh your memory. Line! Quality of mercy is not strain, but it droppeth as gentle as rain. <laughs> On the place below, until we have shuffled off this mortal coil. <laughs> Alas, poor York, I know him well. I get thee to an enemy! <laughs> Line? Nunnery. <laughs> As a child, I was taught by nuns. And, and then in high school, I was taught by the Benedictine priests. I rather like the nuns, though. They were sort of warm, 
though they were fairly crazy too. <laughs> I, I like the priests also, because of my junior and senior years, I spent a few weekends joining the daily routines of the monastery. First it was prayers, then breakfast, then prayers, then lunch, then prayers, then, then supper, then prayers, then sleep. I, I found the predictability quite attractive. I and the food was good too. I was going to join the monastery right after high school, but they said I was too young and that I should wait. So I did. But then I just stopped believing in all those things. So instead, I became an accountant. And I studied sine and cosine and, and then logarithms and then tangents. Line! I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing here. You guys came here quick to see Private Lives or, or Hamlet or something, and instead you got me, and I'm just very sorry. And, and I just can't recall attending a single rehearsal. I can't imagine what I was doing. Oh, and also you came here quick to see Edwin Booth, and he broke both of his stupid legs, so you got me instead, and I'm very sorry. So you'll just have to excuse me. Lied in the kindness of strangers. <laughs> Stella! It's a far, far better thing to do than I've ever done before, and it's a far, far better place to go than I've ever been before. A, B, C, B, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q-R-S. Oh, good! Are you Ophelia? I get me to a nunnery! <laughs> get in? Well, okay. This must be one of those modern hamlets. Hello. Nothing to be done. Pause, pause. Wrinkles nose, nothing to be done. You're not Ophelia, are you? We'll just wait. Pause. Either he'll come. Pause. 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 Or he won't. Well, that's a reasonable attitude. Are we on a guess? Oh, waiting for Godot? No, dear. He came already. It was an awful war. Yesterday he came, garlic on his bread, telling a lot of unpleasant jokes about the Jews and, and Pollocks and stewardesses. He was just dreadful. Pause. Rolls her eyes upward. So. Who are we waiting for, then? We're waiting for Lefty. Oh, and, and is he a political organizer? Pause. Want to guess? Yes, dear, he is a political organizer. He's always coming around saying, get off your behinds and organize. Fight the system. Do this. Do that. He's exhausting. He's worse than Jane Fonda. And he has got a credit to just like you know. I don't know which of them is worse. So, we're really not waiting for anyone, then, are we? No, dear, we're not. It's just another happy day. Pause, smile, pause, pick snit from head. Do you smell something? That's not your line. Willie doesn't have that many lines, but Willie, how talkative we are this morning! Ew! There seems to be some sort of muck in the bottom of my garbage can! Mustn't complain, Willie. There's muck at the bottom of everyone's garbage can. Count your blessings, Willie. I do. One, two, three. Are you counting, Willie? I guess so. I'm up to three. Three is my eyesight. Oh my God, Willie! I've gone blind! I can't see, Willie! Oh my God, what a terrible day! Oh me! Oh my! Oh well, not so bad, Willie. I only use my eyes occasionally when I wanted to see something, but no more. God, I really don't know this play at all. Count, count your blessings, Willie. Let me hear you count them. Okay. One, two, three, that's my eyesight. Four, that's my hearing. Five, uh, that's my master charge. And, and six, now well, that's my... Willie? No. Why did you leave the monastery, Willie? Was it for the same reason I left the opera? 
I have no idea. Well, that's the other because I couldn't sing. They were mad to have hired me. Certifiable. And they were certified shortly afterward. The entire staff. They reside now at the Rigoletto home for the mentally incapacitated. In Turin. Pause. Have just for time to her nose. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? This is really a voice. Perhaps there is a god. At this evening's performance, the role of Sir Thomas More, the man for all seasons, normally played by Edwin Booth, will be played by George Spelman. The role of Lady Alice, normally played by Sarah Bernhardt, will be played by Sarah Siddons. The role of Lady Margaret, normally played by Eleanor Deuce, will be read by the stage manager. And at this evening's performance, the executioner will play himself. What did he say? He said the executioner will play himself. <laughs> what does he mean? The executioner will play himself. <laughs> Oh, Father, why have they marked you up in this dreadful dungeon? It's more than I can bear. I've brought you a custard, Thomas. Mother's brought you a custard, Father. Well, thank you very much. Oh, Father, be so given to King Henry. They're going to cut your head off. Aren't you going to eat the custard I've brought you, Thomas? Uh, no, thank you. I'm not very hungry right now. Ah! <laughs> I've got to get out of here. He's over here. He'll never give in to the king. No, no, I might. Quick, is this all about Anne Boleyn and everything? Yes, and you won't give in because you believe in the Catholic Church, the infallibility of the Pope, and the everlasting life of the soul. No, I necessarily don't believe in any of that stuff. Oh, sir, there's been a terrible error. I really don't care if the king wants to marry Anne Boleyn. He just want to wake up. Oh, Father, don't deny God just to spare our feelings. Mother and I are willing to have you dead in this question of principle. <laughs> Though the first batch of ghosts didn't come out all that well, this is the second batch. But it has a piece of hair in it, I think. Will you shut up about your stupid custard? Look, I don't think the Pope is infallible at all. I think he's a normal man with normal capabilities who wears gold slippers. <laughs> I was going to join the monastery when I was younger, but I didn't do it. Oh, Willie, I was having the most pleasant dream. Go ahead, let them cut your head off. It'll be a nice change of pace. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, that blade looks very real to me. I want to wake up now, or a change of plays or something. Amanda, who shot do you think that is? Oh, thank you! Uh, a horse, a horse, uh, my kingdom for a horse? Sir Thomas More, you have been found guilty on the charge of high treason. It is the sentence of this court. They be taken to the Tower of London, thence to the place of execution. And there your head should be stricken from your body, and may God have mercy on your soul. Oh, let's talk about God. All right, I'm sorry I didn't join the monastery when I was younger. Maybe I should have, and I'm sorry I, I giggled during mass in third grade, but, but I see no reason to be killed for it. Nothing to be done. That's what I find so wonderful. No! Do I understand you right? You wish to change your previous stand on King Henry's marriage and, and deny the Bishop of Rome? Yes, yes, God, yes! We just want to wake up. That's a terrible legacy of cowardice for Sir Thomas More to leave behind. I don't care. I'm going to ignore what you just said and cut your head off anyway. <laughs> Besides, the children have got to have their heroes to look up to. The church needs the saints. Don't you all agree? Well, I agree. I know I need someone to look up to. Father, I mean, yes, yes, I can feel myself waking up now. The, the covers have just fallen off the bed. And I'm cold, so I'm going to reach down and pull them back up again. Sir Thomas More, prepare to meet your death. Be quiet, I'm about to wake up. <laughs> Sir Thomas More, prepare to meet your death. I'm awake. No, I'm not. <laughs> he doesn't know his life. Sir Thomas More, prepare to meet your death. Blind? Blind? You turn to the executioner and say, Friend be not afraid of your office, you send me to God. I don't like that line. Give me another one. That's the line in the script, George, say it. 
I don't want to. Say it, George. Say it, Billy. It'll mean a lot to me and to generations of school children to come. Oh, Hamlet, speak the speech, I pray you. You're tripping me on the tongue. Say it. All right. Friend, be not afraid of your office. You send extraordinary how potent cheap music is. That's not the line. Women should be struck regularly like gods. Say the proper line, George. They say you can never dream your own death. So I expect just as soon as he brings the blade down, I'll wake up. Say the line, George. So I might as well just get it over with. Friend, be not afraid of your office. Goodbye, Willie. Goodbye, Hamlet. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Sir Thomas. You send me to my God. Behold, the head of Sir Thomas More. Oh, Willie, I wish I weren't blind and could see that. <laughs> oh, well, no matter. It's still been another happy day. Pause. Smile. Pause. Pick snip from head. Pause. Wiggles ears. All in darkness. Utterly useless. No one can see her. She stares ahead. Count to end of pledge.